What's going on guys? Brandon Kyusef here with Kyusef Trading and I have decided that at the end of this array tutorial video series we are going to build this TPO market profile indicator from scratch because it makes good use of arrays. It uses for loops, it uses the array.from function, a lot of array.pushes, shifts, array.removes. We do uh, loop breaks as well. And also, we use arrays that save their state. We use arrays that do not save their state. And we also run for loops inside of a for loops. So a for loop inside of a for loop. Yes, that is possible. So this is a, what we'll say a multifaceted array driven script. So we're going to build it from scratch at the end of this video. It will do this on your screen just like it's doing on mine. I feel like that's a great accomplishment to end the array video tutorial series and sort of solidify and put together everything we've learned. But we're not going to touch this for a few videos. In this video, we're going to focus on putting elements into arrays, removing elements from those arrays. So let's get started. Focusing on how to get data into an array. We've used array.push in the last two videos, and there is an additional function to put data in an array, and it's called array.set. Let's discuss array.push just a little bit more thoroughly here. So array.push reads this function appends a value to an array. That description is, uh, it's a little confusing when I guess you don't know the verbiage associated with coding, but all this means is that an array, that's our basket, that basket can hold data. And when we use array.push, we are putting data into the basket. Now we're mainly going to use array.push when we are trying to retrieve data but we don't know the exact number of data points that are going to be retrieved. So array.push is mainly going to be used in an if statement, so an if block here. So if something happens, then push a certain value, open, high, low, close, volume, a custom made indicator, RSI, etc. So push a value, and we'll do close here. So if something happens, then push the close price into our array. Again, we can push any value into an array here. We can do VWAP. We could do an SMA. We could do volume, etc. Now, when we use array.push, normally we're not going to know the size of our array. So let's go back to that example. When we said if close equals open, uh, they call that a doji, right? We said if close equals open, then we want you to take the close price of the session and put it in our basket of data, which was our array. Now, when we load up a chart, we have no idea how many times a doji or the close was equal to the open. We do not know that beforehand. So this means it would be difficult to create an array. So we'll, we'll just call this array R, <laughs> ARR equals array dot new float. And let's just go ahead and look at the description. This function creates a new array object of float type elements. Real quick, if we do array dot and then we hit control space, this is going to give us all the array types that can be created. So we have array integers, float, boolean, string, color, line, label, box, table, line, fill. So you can create an array to hold uh, certain data and elements just as you would create a one-time initialization variable, which we discussed thoroughly in the original PineScript video course here. So when we say var float, var int, var bool, var color, all these language operators, these keywords here, can be used to create an array. So we can do array.new int, array.new color, array.new string, and of course a string array, it's only gonna hold strings, a color array will only take colors. A float array can take floats or integers. An integer array will only take integers. A Boolean array will only take Booleans, which is essentially true false conditions. Now, when you first start with arrays, you are mostly going to be declaring them as one-time initialization variables here. We've discussed what this keyword means in the original PineScript video course. Now, if we do not use 
this keyword VAR, then our array, it's going to automatically clear itself on every new bar. So just to show an example of that, let's do array.new float. And we are going to say array.push ARR closed. Now, if we do plot array.sum, and if we look at the description here, this function returns the sum of an array's elements. When we just put array.push close, every single closing price on every bar update on this chart is going to be put into the array. So when we put array.sum ARR, because that array is going to have every single closing price that's ever happened on the daily time frame on this chart, we're going to get the sum of all closing prices. Oh, and it looks like I got an error probably up here. So let's go ahead and, okay. So this gives us the sum of all closing prices that have ever happened. You can see that this value is increasing up and to the right with no decreases. Now, if we do not declare our array when we create it with the VAR keyword, we're still going to push the close value into the array on every bar. Let's go ahead and plot the sum now and see what happens. And what we get is this is just the closing price of every session. The array is not saving its state, which means we push the close price into the array on every bar. That increases the array size by one. However, because we did not put the VAR keyword, we're not telling PineScript that this array is going to save its previous elements. This means that on every bar update, the array clears itself, so it goes to zero, and then it's going to take the new value, the new close here. And that will be the only element in the array on every bar update. Now, declaring arrays without the VAR keyword, there are instances where you do need to do that. For instance, in that TPO script that we were looking at at the beginning of this video, that required using arrays that did not save their state because we were looping back on every bar update. However, for the most part, when you're just starting with arrays, you're going to be using arrays that save their state and they keep the data that is pushed into them. That is achieved by simply putting VAR. Now, the other way to push data into an array is with array.set. Let's go ahead and read this description and the arguments. This function sets the value of the element at the specified index. Now, when we use array.set, we have to give the array when we create it here in array.new float color, string, etc. We have to give it an initial size. We don't need to give it an initial value, but we have to give it an initial size. And the reason for that is when we use array.set, we're telling PineScript, hey, go to this index in the array and put this value at that index in the array. Now with array.push, that is not necessary because we're not telling PineScript to go to a certain index in the array and put a value there. We're just saying, hey, PineScript, take this value and just put it in the array. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a new index in the array. Array.set will not create a new index in the array. If you're confused with what an index in an array is, we discussed it in the video that explained how to use lines and labels in arrays. An array index, you can think of it this way, it is the size of the array, the number of elements or data points in the array. So to further explain that point, when we put array.push ARR close, every single close that happens on the daily chart is going to be put into the array. So let's go ahead and do plot array.size close here. And if we hover over array.size, the function returns the number of elements in an array. You can also think of this as the function returns the number of indexes in an array. So let's go ahead and plot the array.size of ARR, not close. Okay, and we can see the size of our array is 7,454. This means that there are 7,454 indexes in our array that we're putting the close price into. Now, if we go to the very beginning of the data set when we weren't even able to put any close prices into the array because it was the first bar, right? We can see obviously right before here, the array size would be zero. And then on the first close, the array size will be one. Then on the next bar, we put another close price into that array 
on this session. Now the array size is 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. All the way up until the current bar, which is 7,454 elements. So 7,454 indexes. Now when we push the values into the array, that creates an index, and it puts the value in there. And the size of the array increases by 1. But if we try to use array.set, we are telling PineScript, hey, you need to go to this index and put the value that I want you to put in there. Now, if the array does not have any indexes available, we're going to get an error. So let's go ahead and try that. So we're going to say array.set r, and we're going to say index 0. Index 0 is always going to be the first element in the array, the first index in the array. So index 0 is going to hold this close price here on January 29th, 1993. And then index 7,454 is going to have the most recent close price. So let's try to set the close price at index 0 and see what happens. And we will go ahead and plot array.size ARR. So we're plotting the size of array ARR. And we get an error. Okay, in array.set function, index zero is out of bounds. Array size is zero. Array.set is not going to create a new index, as we discussed, and put a value there. There already has to be an index there. So the only way this is going to work is when we come to array.new float, we can see that there is a size argument. Initial size of an array, optional, the default is zero. Now, we can create an array with a size of 100, which just means we're giving it 100 open slots or indexes for which it can hold data. But we can still push values into an array, even if we set the initial size at 100, that size, the size of that array can still go up to 100,000. That's the max size of the array on PineScript. So when we initially create the size of an array, it's okay if we put, for instance, five, but then that array is gonna end up holding 10,000 values. That's okay. But if we use array.set, there must be elements already in the array or open index slots in the array so we can put the value in that index. And just to further explain that point, let's pretend this is our array. It has five values, one, two, three, four, five. This also means that this array has five indexes. Now, as we explained in the line and labels array video, index zero is a thing. So even though we have value one in this array, it is placed at index zero. Value two is placed at index one, value three at index two, etc. Now we already have values in the array. This array size is five. So if we use array.set, right, and we say, okay, zero, at index zero, I want you to put the number three, if we go ahead and run that, what's going to happen is PineScript is going to go into the array, check for index 0. It's going to see that index 0 has the value 1, and it's going to set index 0 to the value of 3 instead, because that's what we told it to do. But if there's no values in the array, it has no indexes, and we tell PineScript, hey, go to index 0 and set the value of 3, it's going to go check to see if there's an index 0. It will see that no values are in the array, and we're going to get this error. Now, if we determine the size of the array when we create the array, so let's go ahead and put the size of 5. We can also set the initial value. For instance, if we put 1, then this is going to create an array with 5 indexes, and they're all going to have the number 1 there. You probably won't use initial value too much, but it is something to keep in mind uh, that it is an available option here. So we're going to create an array with a size of 5. Consequently, this is what that is going to look like. This is how we can visualize that. So we're going to have an index available here, comma, index here, comma, here, here. And that's going to be it. But it's, so we have an open index here. There's no value in it. So we have index 0 is open. Index 1 is open with no value. Index 2 is open with no value. Index 3 is open with no value. And index 4 is open with no value. Index 0 through 4 constitutes an array size of 5. So even though these have no values, we can still tell PineScript to go to index 0 and put the number 3. And we can do that because 
there are five indexes in this array because when we created the array, we gave it a size of five. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and we can see our array size is five. Now I can also do plot array.get ARR zero. And we'll go over array.get here shortly. And when I go ahead and plot that, boom, we can see it is giving us the value of three. When I put my mouse over it, it goes away. The value of three here, because we said array.set ARR in index zero, put the value three. Now, once more, array.set is only going to work when the array has available indexes to use. So usually you're going to be using array.set when you already know how many values you want in the array and you know how much data you're going to be put putting into the array. Now, when you don't know that beforehand, you're usually going to be using array.push. So when an instance happens, once more, if volume is greater than, right, let's say vol moving average, we're going to say array.push volume because we have no idea how many times volume is going to be above the moving average. So using array.set, right, if we knew beforehand, okay, on this entire 7,000 bar set, volume is going to exceed the moving average 3,000 times, okay, then we could do array.set, right, we could say five volume. But normally, you're going to be using array.push. Now, lastly, another way to put elements into an array initially is with the function array.from. So let's go ahead and read that description. This function takes a variable number of arguments with one of the types int, float, bool, string, label, line, color, box, table, line, fill, and returns an array of the corresponding type. You probably won't be using array.from too often. You'll mainly be using this function when you already know the elements that are going to go into an array and you want them in there immediately. Now, when we use array.push, we're normally going to use that function when we say if something happens, then array.push put that something into the array. Array.set, like we, like we discussed earlier in the video, are usually going to use this function when we already know the elements we want in an array and how many elements are going to go into that array. Array.from is going to be very similar to array.set. However, we don't need to specify the index okay, that the value is going to go into. So when we use array.set, our array was called r. We set index 0, and we want to put the close. Now with array.from, this is essentially going to create an array with all the values that we put uh, as arguments here. So we could say, for instance, we could say n equals array.from close, close 1, close 2, close 3, close 4, and n is then going to be created on every bar update. It'll be a new array with the five previous closing prices in that array. Uh, you won't be using this too often. Normally you would use this when, for instance, if we go back to that TPO script here, I used the array.from argument to put a, b, c, d, e, f, g, all uppercase, lowercase, and then some of these miscellaneous characters. Now, if I didn't use array.from here, I would have had to use array.push a, array.push b, or even I would create the array there string str equals array dot new string and let's give it a hundred indexes and then we could say we got to put our brackets here too and then we could say array dot set we'd say str zero a and then we'd have to do it again array dot set in index one put b but with array dot from we don't need to specify the index we just give the function the values that we want in the array and then array is created in the order in which you put the values are going to be at the corresponding in index. So A will be index zero, B index one, C index two, etc. So we could put a ton of values in an array with array.from without having to specify the index and use multiple array.set functions or multiple array.push functions. These are the main ways to put elements in an array. Again, you're most likely going to be using array.push because you're not going to know beforehand how much data your array is going to hold, and you're not going to know exactly when 
these certain conditions that you specify are going to happen. So when those things happen, you push an you push a value into the array. Array dot set. You're also more likely to use that than array dot from. Uh, you'll be using array dot set a lot when you're using when you're doing for loops. And then array dot from is essentially just to create an array. You already know what you want in that array. It's not really going to change down the road. It can change down the road, but then you're just going to populate it with a bunch of values and you don't want to have to set the index for them that will be done automatically. So you can just accomplish that. Essentially array dot set you can accomplish with array dot from all in one function here. Now, of course, there's a few other ways to put elements in an array, such as array dot fill. Uh, you probably won't be using this too often, this function, but it is there, it is available. So that's going to be it for this video. In the next video, we're going to check out array.size function and the array.get function. And with that knowledge, because now we're able to put elements into an array, we're going to learn how to see how many elements are in the array and how we can use the size of the array to specify what data we want to take out of the array by using array.get. So with that information, we're going to create a linear regression channel. That'll be a lot of fun. And that'll be a way for us to sort of solidify everything we've learned so far. So we're going to put elements into an array in the next video. And then we're going to retrieve those elements using array.get and array.size functions. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video.